But reading sounds awfully harsh. That if I even call somebody, I won't look at anyone, a fool, <laughs> or say raka, which is basically a loose translation of raka or reka, is blockhead. So that means that Lucy from the Peanuts um, cartoon strip, who used to always call Charlie Brown a blockhead, she's going to hell. That's not what it means. What Jesus was doing is he just talked a bit in, in Matthew 5 about the Beatitudes. Blessed are those who are poor in spirit, the people that are humble. Blessed are those who think about others before themselves. Blessed are those people that are peacemakers. Now he goes on to talk about not the good things, but the bad things that we do. And what he's saying, if you read in between the lines, is I'm calling you to a higher level. Not just to the Ten Commandments that the Pharisees follow, thou shalt not kill. But what if I don't kill you with a, with a rock or with a sword or with a gun, but I kill your spirit by calling you names? The devil loves to divide and conquer. It's his greatest strategy. If no one ever remembers anything I've ever said in a homily, they remember that, then my life will be complete. He loves to drive wedges between us. And it can start with the simplest things. I'm sure when we were younger, we probably told jokes that maybe had a little ethnic twist to them. And maybe you think it's funny, and maybe you tell an Irish joke, and I'm Irish, and I, and I think it's funny. But when we tell those kind of jokes, there's a little bit of sarcasm in there. And if I say a little joke that's kind of a little bit insulting, then I think it's funny, then someone thinks it's okay to say a joke that's even more insulting. And where does it end? We start judging people, a whole class of people, by, by one characteristic or another characteristic. Look at all the stuff that's going on right now with all of the, the demonstrations and riots and everything. Everyone's afraid to talk about it from the pulpit for fear that we'll say something, especially if it's being taped, that people will take offense at it. But if we don't talk to one another, and more importantly, listen to one another, to understand where people are coming from, why they do what they do, not to judge, well, you did that, so you must be like this. And you like this person, so you must be like that. If we don't start to talk to one another, we're no better than those people that, that start that process of saying, you're a jerk, or you're a fool, or you're a blockhead. You see, heaven is a perfect place. And in a perfect place, love is perfect. Everybody loves one another. The person that you love in heaven, the least, you'll love more than the person that you love here on earth right now the most. Because our love here on, on earth is impure. It's fragile. It's sometimes selfish even. But in heaven, it's not. But in order for us to, to be able to keep heaven that way, we have to love one another and forgive one another and, and talk to one another and understand one another. And it takes work. It's not easy. But if we begin by, by, by calling people names, it just starts us down that wrong path to divide one another. St. Barnabas was kind of the antithesis of all of this. His, he's one of my favorite saints, not just because his real name was Joseph, but, uh, but because he's the saint of... They called him the son of encouragement. As a matter of fact, that's what Barnabas means. It's a nickname. Bar in, in I, I think, Hebrew or Aramaic means the son of. So Bar Nabus is the son of encouragement. He was one of the, the first disciples when, after Pentecost, they all started to live together and try and figure out what they were going to do now that Jesus was gone and, and, and start to form this new church that we celebrate today. He was one of the ones that went and sold his property and came and said, here's all my money, take it, use it for the building up of God's kingdom. And then when St. Paul had that conversion, Paul who was there when they stoned St. Stephen to death, who was going around that his mission in life was to crush this Christian movement, to wipe out 
all of these Christians, stop this nonsense. When he got hit by a lightning bolt and Jesus said, stop persecuting me. And he had that great conversion. People were afraid of him. They were prejudiced against him. But Barnabas saw the good in him and encouraged the other apostles. I've heard him talk. I've seen him. I know he's had a change of heart. Give him a chance. And he encouraged the others to accept Paul, even though he was one of those people. If Barnabas had never encouraged the other apostles and the other Christians to accept Paul, would we have half of the New Testament the way we do now? We have a choice in these troubled times. We can either become part of the problem or part of the solution. But it's so important that we learn more about all the problems in our world and the ways that we can solve them. Working together, not divided the way the devil wants us to be divided. But it all begins with prayer and introspection and research to understand what the issues are, to understand one another. And always, always to encourage one another and to begin with trust, begin with love, recognizing that in the eyes of God, we're all treasured, treasured sons and daughters.